Here at Machine DRO, we are often asked if it's possible to retrofit digital readouts to the majority of lathes and milling machines found within the Model Engineer's Workshop. In short, there is no right or wrong way, given that these machines can be over 50 years old and not designed to accommodate this modern technology. However, an acceptable solution is often available. In this brief demonstration, we're going to show you how we retrofitted a 1954 Myford ML7 with a digital readout using standard equipment that we supply as well as odds and ends found in a majority of workshops. Firstly, we need to find out which linear scales we need by measuring the travel of the cross slide and the travel of the carriage along the bed. Position the cross slide to its maximum innermost position and mark a line across the cross slide and saddle. Being careful not to disengage the lead screw, wind the cross slide to its maximum outer position. Measure between the marks made on the cross slide and the saddle and this will give you the total cross slide travel distance. This procedure is then repeated for the carriage travel along the bed. Machine DRO stock a large and versatile range of linear glass scales. The complete range is fully compatible, allowing any combination of length and scale series to be used together. This makes it possible to select the most suitable scales that are compatible with any of our consoles for your machine install based upon physical space restrictions, mounting options and cost. The series of four glass scales are the standard GS300, which is the most commonly supplied, then the slim GS500, then the micro GS200, as well as the long length GS600, which caters up to 3 meters. Looking at the linear scales, there are two mounting blocks fitted, one at each end of the scale body, both of which are slotted for adjustment. The reading head has two mounting holes with a grub screw in each corner to act as jacking screws for mounting to uneven surfaces. A selection of mounting bolts of either M3 or M4, depending upon scale type, are part of the fixing kit. Included with the linear scales is a mounting bracket kit. Depending on machine model, you may also need to fabricate your own packing and brackets. But our mounting kit is a good place to start. For our ML7, cross slide travel was measured at 145mm and carriage travel was measured at 450mm. Based on these two measurements, we will be fitting a GS300 520 standard and a GS500 170 slim linear scales. With our linear scales correctly identified, if needed, we can also select the appropriate protective covers. Before starting, work out where you would like to mount the scale so that it doesn't restrict the lathe, keeping in mind that the scale's rubber seal is not exposed. Ideally, face the mount seal away from the direction of any swarf and coolant splashes. In this position, any swarf and coolant will naturally flow over and away from the scale. With the cross slide and linear scale set up to the middle of their travel, we offered the scale up at various locations along the cross slide. It became apparent that the cross slide was too short and it would be necessary to fabricate a bracket or extension plate. After some thought, we looked at the possibility of mounting the scale so it would project outwards towards the rear of the cross slide which would avoid obstacles such as the saddle locking bolt, lubrication nipples, locking screws and feed wheels. As we wanted to keep drilling and tapping to a minimum, where we could, we wanted to utilise existing fixing bolts found on the Myford. With this in mind, the cross slide on the Myford has four T-slots that can be used to attach the scale. Firstly, we manufactured two T-nuts from steel angle, which were tapped for grub screws. The aluminium bar was then attached to the T-nuts, ready to be bolted to the cross slide. The aluminium bar can now be slotted into position and secured with the grub screw. With the bar in position, clocked and adjusted, the scale can now be bolted in place and checked to be parallel. The reading head can now be mounted directly onto the carriage with its two mounting bolts drilled and tapped into the saddle casing. The reading head has four jacking screws, one in each corner which can be used to centralise the head to the scale body. Once in place, the installation clips can now be removed. And there we are, that's the first slide successfully installed.
The second scale that we need to install is the GS300 520 along with a B-type cover which is a two-part protective guard with an aluminium backing plate. This can be fitted to the machine by drilling and tapping the plate as required. Looking at the rear of the lathe, the ML7 has a machined flat area on the rear of the bed. This was originally used for a taper turning attachment. As this attachment won't be used on this machine, it provides a perfect place to mount the linear scale. There is a line of existing thread holes for the taper attachment. We can drill and counterbore the backing plate to use two of these existing threaded holes. Near these fixing holes, two grub screws were also drilled and tapped. These act as jacking screws and can be adjusted to bring the backing plates parallel to the bed. The linear scale now needs to be placed in position to work out which brackets we will need for the reading head. Looking at the standard bracket kit supplied, the long L-shaped bracket can be used with a packing piece drilled and tapped with jacking screws, allowing us to adjust the packer to the correct thickness and angle. The packer can also be tapped with the appropriate fixings to use a pair of slots on the bracket. This will also give us the height adjustment. The reading head is attached to the bracket via two tapped holes on the underside, which allows for adjustment to centralise the reading head with the scale body. The combination of jacking screws and slotted brackets provide the means for simple adjustments, making fitting the scales much easier. With the reading head now in place, attach the B-type cover to the top side of the backing plate using its two countersunk bolts. This will protect the scale from coolant and swarf and it also means you can remove the outer cover without disturbing the scale's position. Connecting the scales to the display console is straightforward. The scales have 3 meters of armoured cable with a 9-way D-type plug fitted. The excess can be cored around the back of the machine cabinet and fastened with cable ties. The main consideration when routing the cables is to avoid possible entanglement with moving parts. Allow plenty of slack for travel and secure firmly. One of the best ways is to use P-clips, although this does add another hole to drill and tap. It is certainly a more permanent method of fixing, unaffected by coolant and offering good strain relief. The console is supplied with mounting arm, protective cover, power lead and user manual. The arm has two mounting holes enabling the console to be drilled and attached to the machine or a nearby wall for example. With our MyFord, the cables and power lead are secured to the arm to ensure tidiness and safety for the user. As with most engineering projects, there is always a number of possible solutions, and installing a digital readout does require thought and planning with regards to your requirements. Performing the install yourself can be a challenge, but ultimately interesting and enjoyable. Alternatively, you can contact us about installation services provided by a network of engineering companies across the UK. For this and further information about digital readout systems and other products can be found on our website. <laughs>